If I was to say Mark Henry vs Big Show was the match of the night, would you instantly think, damn, that match must have been good, or damn, the rest of the matches must have sucked ass tonight. Who knows, but I guess we're going to find out. What's up people, Jade up here with my 2011 WWE Vengeance review video, gonna be giving you guys match results, highlights of the night, and also my thoughts and opinions on everything that occurred at this show. We had a lot of big moments, so make sure you stay tuned, also make sure you rate this video thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button up there, thanks. First match of the night was the Tag Team Championship bout, Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger versus Air Boom. The live crowd was hot and cold for this match, but I was with it from the beginning. Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne, their characters are kinda bland for me and they leave a lot to be desired as far as I'm concerned but they for damn sure can hold their own when it comes to them and their in-ring ability their styles mesh so well together and they had some great double team moves in their arsenal tonight and that's what led to them retaining their titles after a melee of some good back and forth action, Ziggler gets the roll up on Kingston and he had his tights in the process, but Kofi kicks out of that, he hits him with the Trouble in Paradise, gets a tag in on Bourne, he goes up top, hits Ziggler with the Airborne, and the match is over in a matter of seconds. Really enjoyed this match, got the night started off on a great note with some fast paced rapid fire action and a great outing from both teams. Immediately after that match ended, we go into Ziggler defending his United States Championship against Zack Ryder. Ryder came straight out of the gate with a ton of intensity, trying to capitalize on the fact that Ziggler just got done competing in another match. Ryder was in control for most of this match, with Ziggler mostly on defense. And at one point, Ziggler actually tried to walk away from the match, but he was thrown back into the ring by Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne, thus getting themselves ejected from ringside. And you basically could have declared the winner at that point, because with the numbers against him... It was all over for Zack Ryder, so I guess that uh, internet championship, that fake title that he got made, that's the only one he's going to be holding on to for now, because he damn sure didn't get the United States championship. Vicky gets the ref's attention, Swagger grabs Zack Ryder's legs, Ryder hits him with a baseball slide, but the distraction was just enough for Ziggler to hit Ryder with a super kick. He gets a pin and retains his championship. This match was more than I expected it to be with Ziggler competing twice tonight. Major props for him doing that. I always thought Ryder was a pretty good in-ring competitor, even before the whole Z-True Long Island story and the whole quote-unquote Ryder revolution. I enjoyed this match. will enjoy even more seeing the reaction from the Zack Pack going nuts over the result. Diva title was on the line next. Beth Phoenix defending versus Eve. To be completely honest, I really liked this match. It was actually the best Divas match that I've seen in a while. I don't even know how long the hell. I just know it was the best. I would rank it above all of those recent Kelly Kelly Beth matches from pay per views. Eve, she pulled out some nice stuff out of the bag tonight. And Insiguri, an octopus like submission that she really wore down Beth with. And uh, it was some all in all good action from both Eve and Beth. But the impressive outing for Eve wasn't enough for her to get a win tonight. She goes up top for a moonsault. She misses her target. Beth picks her up for a glam slam. Hits that. Pins her. 1-2-3. Match over and done with. Beth Phoenix retains her Divas Championship. Surprisingly, I really enjoyed this match. One of my models, you guys know at this point, criticize when necessary, but give credit where credit is due. You saw the criticized portion of that a couple of weeks ago when I went the hell off on that horrible-ass debacle. Monday Night Raw episode, and now you're seeing the credit portion. Good job, ladies. Next up, a match that featured two great competitors and members of my personal fave five, Christian and Sheamus. This match was a bit too slow in parts for my liking, but a solid match nonetheless. My two favorite spots of the match started out in a very similar way, but had completely different results. At one point in the match, Sheamus goes for a bro kick, but Christian, to avoid it, simultaneously goes for a spear, which he connects with, and then goes for a pin. After Sheamus kicks out, he battles himself back into control before Christian ends up hitting him with the Hurricanrana from the top rope. Christian, he's winding up and he's setting up Sheamus for that spear. He's in the corner and he's you know, winding up, you know, so he goes charging at Sheamus to hit the spear, but Sheamus ends up hitting him with a bro kick and Sheamus ends up coming out on the winning end of that exchange and he gets a pin on Christian and wins the match also. 
This was nowhere near a bad match, but just knowing everything that Christian and Sheamus have been through these last couple of months with the interferences and attacks and Christian costing Sheamus victories and multiple titles, they should have stepped it up a whole hell of a lot tonight, and I just did not see that. Good just wasn't good enough in this case, especially knowing the circumstances and frankly, knowing that both guys are capable of a lot more. So, with all of that being said, I thought this match was okay. With me being such big fans of both guys, I wish I could say a lot more than just okay, but sadly that's all I got tonight. Triple H and CM Punk vs. Miz and R-Truth was up next. Punk and Triple H actually worked very well as partners tonight. There was no leftover tension whatsoever. If they had decided to go in that direction, it definitely would have added a very interesting layer to the match. But they chose to avoid that area completely at several points during the match. They were being a bit heelish and helping the other play dirty while the ref wasn't looking. And Triple H, man, he took a whole hell of a lot of abuse from the Miz and R-Truth in this match. I would definitely say he was on the receiving end of attacks from the Miz and Truth way more than Punk was tonight. So, while Triple H was in the process of getting his ass kicked, which happened very frequently tonight, he pulled a DDT out of nowhere on Truth. That allows Triple H to get the hot tag in on Punk, and Truth also got the tag in on The Miz. Punk comes in the ring, he clears house, then Triple H ends up getting R-Truth outside of the ring. He throws R-Truth over into the area where the timekeeper, the dude that rings the bell, and the announcer, where all of them sit. Then out of nowhere, Kevin Nash appears, bam, he clocks Triple H, Triple H is laid out. Meanwhile, in the ring, Punk has Miz set up for the GTS, but R-Truth, because of the distraction from... Kevin Nash, he's able to jump back into the ring looking out for his partner. He ends up attacking Punk. And then both guys hit CM Punk with their little Jimmy finale, which is a combination of both of their finishers at the same time. Love the move, hate the name, just like I hate it. That segment earlier on in the night with Miz and Truth arguing about who's the bigger suck up. Like they're standing backstage and they're, oh, I'm the bigger suck up. No, I'm the bigger suck up. No, I'm the bigger suck up. It's sounding like two big fucking kids. And all that I could think. Are you fucking serious? Really? 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 I beg of WWE to drop this campy bullshit with them. The team, it's cool, as is, but stuff like this, along with their entrance and other stuff, when you add it all up, it's really holding them back. It's like baggage. They can't go forward as long as they're holding on to all of that. They could be so much better if they were treated seriously. And, like, I look at Hell in a Cell, and I see on that night what they were. And if they continue on in that same direction, the potential of what they can become. And I refuse to settle for less. So after the little Jimmy finale, Miz pins Punk, gets to win, Nash throws Triple H into the steel steps, brings him back into the ring and hits him with a jackknife powerbomb. That of course creates a lot of questions as to what's the next step in this story, but as far as the match goes, it was good. Had no real special feel to it, which it should have had, seeing as it was one of very few matches Triple H has competed in this year, but... I did like the fact that he was willing to take a beat down by the hands of Miz and Truth. That made both of them look good on top of the fact that they actually won the match. Going into the show, I, I thought a win by Awesome Truth was a little bit too much to ask. Not only was it a possibility, it was actually reality. So that was all great. Next up, Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. I was kind of nervous going into this match. Randy Orton, he has a pretty notorious reputation when it comes to him being in matches with up-and-comers so I was like oh shit it's Cody Rhodes gonna be the next name on that long long list of victims and I was waiting on that one moment during the match for Orton to just completely flip out like he's done many times in the past and start calling Cody all type of stupid fucking idiots and stuff like that but luckily that was all avoided 
Gladly, Cody wasn't just fed to Orton, actually it looked like they went out of their way to make it seem as if Cody was on the same level as Orton, and from that perspective, it was a very entertaining match. Rhodes pulls out some usual moves from his arsenal, like the inverted suplex and the Alabama slam, and for some reason, I never thought he could use those moves on Orton and manhandle him in that way. But when he did, it made those moves all the more important. Now, to take a break from all of my gushing, I guess I do have to point out the fact that Cody Rhodes did lose the match. And it wasn't all gloom and doom for Orton. He did hit a great counter drop kick on Rhodes as he was coming off of the top rope. And Orton did get many chances to fight back during the match. So much so to the point that Cody's baggers felt like they needed to interfere. A distraction from one allowed Cody to hit the crossroads on Orton. But Orton ended up kicking out the other bagger jumped up on the apron Randy Orton ended up throwing Cody into that bagger and once Cody turned back around to face Orton he was hit with an RKO Randy gets the pin one two three match over and done with at that point Randy Orton is your winner one of my favorite points during the match was Cody Rhodes doing the Viper windup, you know, pounding on the ground, looking as if he was about to hit Orton with his own finisher, the RKO, but that was a no-go. Even though he lost, I still thought Cody Rhodes had a great showing tonight in a really good match with Orton. The world title was on the line in the second to last match of the night with Mark Henry defending versus the Big Show. When I tell you this match shocked the hell out of me, this match shocked the hell out of me. My expectations were set so low with the fact that these are two huge dudes and there wasn't much that they can do in the ring together, but for what they did do, they did it excellently. I was kind of pissed when Big Show was just embarrassing Mark Henry early on in the match, but things started to even up and it really got good. This was an all-out battle of epic proportions. It kind of reminded me of that uh that old show from Discovery Channel, um Animal face-off where you have computer-generated battles between like elephant and the rhinoceros and the polar bear versus the the walrus but this was live and in color and the shit was good i'm telling you it was good Big Show laid out Henry with the scoop slam, then started setting up for the choke slam. He hit it, went for the pin, and I was like, damn, this can't be it, but they're not going to be out here for that long, so it's over. And I'm like, fuck, but it wasn't over because Mark Henry kicked out. The Big Show, nearing the point of frustration, he decides to resort to that knockout punch, but Henry ends up countering that, hit him with the world's strongest slam, pins him, once again, thought the match is over. I'm like, yes, then... Big Show kicks out, and I'm like, no, the match continues. Then Henry, he goes to the top rope for what exactly? I don't fucking know, but Big Show, he grabs Henry by the neck while he's on that top turnbuckle. You get a super choke slam, goes for the pin. Once again, a near fall, and the match continues. Even before the big moment, and y'all all know what I'm talking about, I was really into this match. I was on the edge of my seat with all of the near falls and all of those big moments, and it all added up to a surprisingly great match. The Big Show, he goes up top to the turnbuckle. He was slow to get up there, and that allowed Mark Henry to get up and go after him. Mark Henry, he's up there, and then it happened. They were up there in position for the superplex, and I was thinking, hmm, these are two big-ass dudes. If they were to crash down on this mat, I'm sure that would have created a lot of force on this ring. Could it happen? Will it happen? And it fucking happened. Mark Henry launches Big Show through the air, connects with the superplex, and as they hit the mat, the fucking ring collapses. The live crowd went nuts in the arena. I went nuts, the chat room on jdubshow.com went nuts, everybody went nuts for a truly great moment. And yes, I know what happened before with the Big Show and Brock Lesnar years ago, but that doesn't take anything whatsoever away from that moment and it being awesome to see. Big Show was carted off, but Mark Henry, he tried to walk away on his own power, but he needed a little help from officials. The ring collapsing was just a sweet icing on top of an already highly entertaining match that apparently ended in a no contest. Well, hell, I'm cool. As long as Mark Henry is still the World Heavyweight Champion, 
I'm good. The two GMs came out during that mess and we had John Laurinaitis and I know people, you want to hear the voice, but I can't do the voice because I'm sick and my throat is already screwed up and hell, I probably sound like him unintentionally already, but I digress. He announces that the show will go on even with the collapsed ring, so that moves us to our main event. John Cena versus the WWE Champion Alberto Del Rio with the title on the line in a last man standing match. They spent about the first 10 minutes of the match in the ring and they were doing well, all things considered, seeing as the whole damn ring was like lopsided. Both competitors actually used the broken ring to their advantage at different points. Del Rio placing Cena under one of the... Uh, ring post that was turned into the ring like he placed them under there then stomped down on it basically driving that ring post into Cena's chest then later on Cena hit Del Rio with a drop toe hold and he face planted on that same ring post they worked their way out of the ring into the backstage area and they had some great action back there incorporating pieces of the set into the match like Del Rio he threw like a bunch of gates down on John Cena but of course John Cena fought through all of that he got back up and the match continued they make their way back into the main portion of the arena Del Rio throws John Cena through this big ass V that was a part of the set decoration then Del Rio he starts climbing up another part of the set but John Cena, he gets up, he yanks him down, and he slams him through a table. They make their way back to the ringside. Cena sets up the steel steps and drops Del Rio with an attitude adjustment through the Spanish announce table. Before the ref even begins to count on Del Rio, R-Truth and The Miz, they run out and attack John Cena who was in the ring. Then the ref begins to count when both dudes were down and out, but Del Rio gets up first, then Cena. That's when Del Rio ran into the ring and attacked John Cena with the WWE Championship and he was out for the count. And did anybody notice how when Del Rio attacked John Cena, he rolled out of the ring and like collapsed near the barricade? There were actually fans picking him up to help him get to his damn feet. That was fucking hilarious. But uh, yeah, at that point, it was all up to John Cena, but he could not answer the 10 count. And he ended up losing the match. Alberto Del Rio wins and retains his WWE Championship in what was a very entertaining match with a whole hell of a lot of cool spots to choose from when it comes to determining which one was the best of the night. And I can say that um, during this show, my predictions were fucking horrible. I maybe got a, uh, let's see, which ones did I get right? I got absolutely obvious ones, Sheamus and Beth Phoenix. Mark Henry, I guess that one doesn't count. That, that was like a, a, a no contest but those are technically the only ones I got right Beth Phoenix and Sheamus but no. the show regardless if my prediction sucked the show was actually really good I think the thing with Vengeance for me is it kind of snuck up on me like we've been so oversaturated with WWE pay-per-views recently so that caused me to uh, look at Vengeance as an afterthought you know, that's that was my thought on Vengeance going into the show. It was an afterthought. But, you know, with my expectations being lower, that actually led me to being uh, very surprised and pleased with this show. So after all was said and done, you know, turned out pretty well for me. The matches that I thought weren't going to deliver really shot the hell out of me. They had a whole hell of a lot to offer to this show. And, yeah, I will say Mark Henry versus The Big Show was the match of the night not because any other match sucked just because that one was so damn good and i have no problem saying that whatsoever so that's it for me in this video i would say vengeance is one of uh wwe's best pay-per-views of the year not actually the best i think those maybe two or three spots are filled already but you know it's up there is definitely up there so let me know what you guys think about vengeance down in the comment section below thank you guys for watching this video i am j dub peace out